Hello and welcome to the Thursday show here on the Frontline Gaming Network. My name is Paul Murphy, your host. I'm joined by Adam Camilleri. Hello, everybody. I'm hoping I'm coming through loud and clear. If I'm not, my apologies. <laughs> Dustin Hinshaw. I'm not delayed. I'm here, everybody. We're good to go. No, <laughs> we're battling the internet. We're battling the meta. We're battling everything. But this is your weekly show where we run down tournaments happening over the weekend. And this weekend, we have two super majors. In, look, this is going to be a, a huge couple of weeks. We've got two super majors in different areas of the globe. One in Nottingham, one in Adelaide. Uh, and then next week we'll be talking about the Las Vegas Open. And so this is all leading up to this people trying to get their ITC points, uh, you know, in before the season closes, before the, the big crescendo where they crown the winners of these types of things for factions and the overall. But one week at a time, we're going to talk about some some absolutely crazy tournaments coming up over this weekend. Interesting list out there. How are y'all doing this week? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Adam? Are I am good? pretty solid. I, I, I've uh, played a go. Played a bunch of games this weekend. Looking forward to practicing or helping some of the other guys I'm with practice for some of their spicier matchups this weekend. I have been playing every day. I have two more games tomorrow, and I'm not even going because I can't. But I'll be there virtually. I know. Yeah. Uh, so this this is the I show where it. we love run it, down. Love it, love it, mate. The tournaments, the list, the factions you're going to see, the meta, you know, we're going to talk about what, what the meta is at the individual events. We're going to talk about how to beat the meta. We're going to also, you know, maybe talk about who we think is going to win or who we think had the best shot. And we'll also highlight what we think are some pretty exciting lists we have we see coming up over uh, these course, these tournaments. We're going to talk about two. The first one is going to be the Adelaide Uprising uh, in South Australia. It's 131 players, eight round is that a super major? Is 131 players a super major now? Is it just is a it? just a giant major? Uh, super major, I thought was. I actually don't know that the threshold think it's for a, super major. Is. It what sounds is it? super to me, and I'll say it's, it probably it's, it's it's a pro- super major. It probably a, seems super to those players super. as well. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a super major. Um, almost. Uh, the, if you're joining this, us live this is in the, the chat. The... What, uh, so, so Adam, I know we're bear with us, and thanks for everyone listening after the fact. Uh, Adam is normally <laughs> spot on, but I want to give a big shout out to the folks already in the chat, already active in the chat. If you're listening to us after the fact, we do this live every Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern, uh, and so people join us, and we're going to get some comments from the chat. So let us know. Actually, if you happen to be uh, in the chat right now, going to one of these events, let us know what you're taking if we don't highlight it. Uh, but yeah, let's go back to this uh, South Australia. I'm glad you put it in there because. I don't know. I would have known where Adelaide was. I I wouldn't have. I would have been able to guess. I would have guessed wrong, actually. <laughs> Am I coming but, through uh, that and clear I can now? go over the quick and dirty stacks here. He, um, he's, he's got a dizzy spell on him. He's doing a Street Fighter dizzy spell, but he's here. He's, he's been toggled. He's been toggled. He's been toggled. <laughs> <laughs> Well, to get this, getting into this, we are going to be talking about the list you're going to see there. And with it, with 131 players that, you know, the, this is when it really gets interesting is, is that we get to see the nice spread of lists that people are taking, but more importantly, we get to see some lists that, that, that aren't being taken. And just because it has a low number of, of, of representation at the weekend for the faction, it doesn't mean that those players are preparing to win the whole thing. So, Mm -hmm. Dustin, I don't know if you just want to kind of jump in here and and run down the quick and dirty stats, what we're going to see in Adelaide. Absolutely. I would love to. I love going through the quick and dirty stats for these super majors. Like you said, I like seeing the different spread of the the armies that we're going to see here. Some of that aren't being taken and some that are that we don't usually see. So the Imperial Super Faction, we have nine sisters, nine custodes that they are shooting up there. Seven Admech, three Astro Militarum, five Grey Knights, and six Imperial Knights. Sisters and custodes crushing the podium right now so like so far i haven't seen the rest of it yet but that's that's uh not surprising actually that's very interesting i spent all day today thinking about this actually the the, the adeptus soritas is as to why mm-hmm. they aren't winning more events like what is it is 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 have these players finally cracked the code as to what the right combination of adeptus soritas uh you know the army composition to win a major event I don't know. Or maybe they're just really excited for the new supplement they're about to get, and they're just trying to get back into the, the sister feeling, right? Well, the Australian meta has always been different. I mean, That's sometimes it's, it's easy to look at them, you know, I, you know, over the time, it's like, are they on the bleeding edge? Are they in their own microcosm? You know, what is the actual, uh, you know, what are they, what, how are they uh, deciding what to take if, and what to play? If, <laughs> if it was audible right now, I'd be able to tell you. <laughs> so, all, <laughs> all, all, all right. So right. Australian meta. Try to launch. It's better Australia for us to launch. Um, 
it's better for us to guess at this point. But sorry, we'll come we'll come back to that. Uh, what do we have in the Space Marine Super Faction? We have Space Marine, so seven Astartes, five Dark Angels, five Space Wolves, four Blood Angels, one Ultramarine, two Death Watch, three Black Templars, and four Iron Hands. That's, I think it's pretty standard there. That's, not, not, that's, that's a nice spread. It's a nice spread. Uh, we don't see any. Well, I don't, we don't see any white scars here. No, we haven't seen any white scars in a lot of uh, tournaments lately. I mean, you think there's a reason for that? They're just not not cutting it in the speed and their close combat now. I don't like. I, I don't. I wonder if if the. I mean, look, we, movement wins games. We know that. Uh, we we see that. It's actually so why some of the factions are, uh, you know, see. I think have a little bit higher win percentage than mm-hmm. that. Maybe you can attribute to their stats. The rest of their stats, their movement stat is is big. Maybe they just aren't able to deliver, you know, are getting across the table for these things that, that, you know, maybe not as efficient on the points side of things isn't what's winning games. And so people are going for more durability or more utility, different utility out of the space Marine faction. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I mean, the plus one damage doesn't help against all this minus one damage stuff out there. So like one of the major chapter tactics is just not helping them, right? The speed is one thing. It's great, but it kind of feels bad if you only get half of it. It's almost better to take death watch at that point. So you can kind of, Mix between the, yeah, yeah, or opt for one of the you know what we see is the the the, the kind of build mm-hmm. your own Astartes. Which there are seven of them so, I mean, recently. Yeah, yeah. Pr- there, there probably is some um, white scar types in there, some iron hand types in there uh, that have not been declared. Yeah, that, that makes sense too. About the Australian meta in in the the word doc, the one you should read out. <laughs> Oh, here we go. Okay, I got it. I got it. I got this it. This is the only way I can. It's the only way I well, can contribute we're gonna, to this. We're going to be doing this. We're going to do this uh, kind of reading style. Then I hope passing you didn't notes. It's like the stuff. telephone passing game. us. Yes. From so you it, might, it might be a little bit me, different, but to the listeners, what is it actually going to say at the end of this? <laughs> Let's see. All right. The Australian meta is defined by team play. So most players are gearing up for team events and the restriction on a single faction per team. We have many, many faction specialists who've developed over the years. Additionally, sisters is in high numbers because they're expensive AF in Australia. And chances are, if you have a big sister army, you don't have money to go in another faction anytime soon. So there you go. There's the, there's the quick and dirty on what the, that's what that means interesting. That. So, I mean, that really could play into a fact, you know, you play what you have, and especially mm-hmm. uh, one of these big events, you want to be a part of it. You want to show up on that stage. Uh, and so people are going to bring what they have, but I, I still, I stand by this is that that faction has all the tools, uh, yeah. but I really think they, they get hampered by a mismatch somewhere along the way, you know, somewhere over the course of the mid rounds of that tournament, they get paired up against something that they did not tech against. Uh, Mm -hmm. But I think there's enough in that book. And maybe with that saturation of players, what percentage of players is that uh, of the overall event? It's a decent chunk. It's a uh, decent chunk. Yeah. Yeah. They they may have figured it out, but you know, we'll see. Yeah. I'm I'm interested to see that too. See how they do. Uh, Onto the chaos super faction. We have one chaos soup, two chaos space green, six T suns, nine death guard. Just always death guard. One, demon and one renegade knight look you know how i feel about death guard oh. they're one of those those factions again that that you know they're really tough on paper but when you start figuring out like oh crap i've actually got to score objectives yeah. on the table <laughs> it gets a little bit more difficult mm-hmm. uh, but again maybe they're you know we're seeing people figure out how to opt in for more movement types of things in those lists but what about the thousand suns like thousand suns is almost like i don't want to say you know we could call this about a s- several lists but it's the the meta that if you're already good against Grey Knights, then are you just uh, by proxy already good against Thousand Suns? And do the Thousand Suns have fewer tricks? They don't have a Dread Knight in their in their army. Mm-hmm. No, that makes sense too. Actually, the Thousand Suns, I, they have been on, I think, a bit of an upswing lately. I'm not really sure why. I've seen them do a lot better than they have in the past. They've always been a good army to me. And I always felt they were actually one of the stronger chaos factions, especially now. Yep. 